Hello viewers, welcome to the Science Hub. My name is Mia Christine. And I'm Mutuku Sunga. And today we'll be speaking about halogens. Halogens are group eight, group eight elements. Seven. Halogens are group seven elements. And they include fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. What has been mentioned exist as molecules. And they all have seven electrons in the atomic energy level. So this elements that have been mentioned exist as gas to solid as you go down the group. Fluorine and chlorine are at room temperature are gases. And bromine at room temperature is a solid. While iodine is a... Where? That's wrong. <laughs> bromine <laughs> at... Is that wrong? Fluorine. fluorine and chlorine are at room temperature are gases. While bromine is a liquid. And iodine is a solid. So these are colored elements. Fluorine is yellow and chlorine is green. Bromine is brown while iodine is dark green. We will now move on to the physical properties of these halogens. Here we have the atomic size and the ionic size. The atomic size and the ionic size increase as you go down the group. Apart from increasing, you can see that the ionic size is is greater than the atomic size. The ionic size is greater than the atomic size because the when forming an anion, the repulsion effect is greater than the forces of attraction. Thus, the energy levels are repelled away from the nucleus. Then this brings up this brings us to the melting and boiling point. The melting point at the boiling point. Um, the melting point. The melting and boiling point increase down the group. This is because the forces of attraction that exist between the molecules increase with increase in size of molecules. We will now move on beyond the chemical properties of these halogens. Chlorine is prepared by reacting the following reagents. You add potassium manganese 7 to hydrochloric acid. So we're going to add potassium manganese into the boiling tube. HCl, which is hydrochloric acid in drop form. So she's going to dip the blue litmus paper inside and the red litmus paper. So unfortunately, we, are, we have a red litmus paper left that has now turned to white. Uh, <coughs> our blue litmus paper dropped into the test tube, but we observed that it changed to white. So this shows that the litmus paper was bleached by what we had inside here. My fellow colleague will explain more. Chlorine. When chlorine is... When chlorine... Wait. When chlorine reacts with the water in the litmus paper, it produces two acids, hydrochloric acid and chloric one acid. Chloric one acid contains a nascent oxygen, which is a bleaching agent. That's why the litmus paper turned to white. So um, we will continue with the reaction of chlorine and water. And as, she does, as we continue with that, I will write down the chemical equations of what has just taken place here. So when chlorine is bubbled into water, it forms chlorine water. Chlorine water is green in color. When you expose chlorine water, when you expose chlorine water into sunlight, it changes the color to colorless. This, this is because chlorine water contains chloric one acid. And when chloric one acid is exposed to sunlight, it decomposes to form, a, to form oxygen and a colorless solution. So here we have chlorine and we have water. 
So when the chlorine and water are added together, we will have chloric one acid and hydrogen and sorry, hydrochloric acid. We will now move on to the reaction of chlorine with metals. So when iron is heated in the presence of chlorine, a dark brown solid is formed. This dark brown solid is can sublime and is connected as a sublimate. Potassium hydroxide can be used in an experiment. So, when iron is heated in the presence of chlorine, we will get a dark brown solid. This dark brown solid is iron 3 chloride. This iron 3 chloride sublimes and collects as a sublimate. My colleague here is writing for us the equation to the mixture of iron and chlorine, where we get iron 3 chloride. The iron iron is written as fair plus three chloride two to get two iron chloride three. So with that viewer we can conclude and say that this iron is required to pass the chlorine is required to pass through the iron to get iron three chloride. In the place of iron we can also use aluminium. Aluminium is going to react with the chlorine to get aluminum chloride. Aluminum chloride is a white solid. Uh, instead of chlorine, we can also use bromine. So bromine is going to react with the iron, forming iron 3 bromide. And iodine is also going to react with iron to form iron 3 iodine. And with that, we have come to the end of our topic. Thank you very much for learning with us, and we hope you have learned a lot.